Hey guys, Derek here from Back to Reality. So Paula and I just finally made it back into our garden after about a, a week or so of neglect due to a long overdue and much needed backcountry kayaking trip. And the garden did pretty well in our absence, but there are two particular vegetables that have given us a pretty good opportunity to look into the life cycle of plant species. Come and take a look. So if you saw our last video, you will likely recall that we just harvested some broccoli rob. And you may have also noticed in the corner that we had some broccoli that was ready to harvest as well. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to harvest that broccoli before we left, and this is the result. So because broccoli is always harvested whenever the plant is relatively young, it's pretty easy to forget that it's actually a flower. But if you let broccoli bolt or begin to go to seed, this is what you end up with. These huge stems with all of these little flower buds on them. And if we leave this for a few more days, they'll actually start to open up and become nice yellow flowers, very similar to these guys on the broccoli rob. So though broccoli rob and broccoli look very similar and share a similarity in their names, they're not even technically related. Broccoli is, is actually part of the cabbage family, whereas this broccoli rob is technically related to turnips. But even though broccoli and broccoli rob are technically not even related, they also happen to both prefer cooler temperatures in the spring and in the fall. And that's why they're starting to flower right now. Because as the temperatures start to increase, the plant realizes that this is, this is not our conditions. This isn't going to work for us anymore. There's no point in continuing to try and grow strong and hardy because we can't handle the really warm temperatures of the summer. Our best efforts can't accurately predict the weather more than about a day or two in advance, but all of these guys have had millions of years of evolution to figure it out. They know when the forecast is not going to be in their favor, and so they determine that this is the end of the line, and it's best to just take all their energy and put it into reproduction instead. So while it's pretty depressing and disappointing to miss out on this particular harvest of broccoli, all is not lost because broccoli technically can be grown twice in one year. We can have a fall harvest as well. And it's also a great opportunity to let this particular plant go to seed so that we can collect some of those and replant them in the future. We don't have to buy seeds if we can keep collecting them from our plants here. Or better yet, why not save both money and energy by simply letting these guys do all of the work themselves? You see, I think we sometimes get so hung up on the typical image of a garden, something that we clear off every spring and replant from scratch, that we forget that plants all over the planet do this on their own every single season. They replant themselves without any interference or any involvement from us. They've got this, we don't need to take charge. As usual, if we can just have a little patience and trust nature, all of these little buds will turn into flowers which will eventually sprout their seeds and drop them where they stand. And then in the fall, we might just get new broccoli plants right where these ones died. And if not in the fall, then the following spring we'll have a whole new crop sitting right here waiting for us to harvest it. Plus in the meantime, all of these flowers give us an excellent opportunity to feed and look after some of our native pollinators. In Canada alone, there are over 700 species of native pollinators, such as different types of wild bees, flies, butterflies, beetles, even hummingbirds. And that doesn't even include the non-native species which are more popular, such as honeybees. So all of this is another really good reason for the chop and drop method that we showed you last fall, where we literally take all of the dead plants and we just chop them and drop them where they lay. Because some of those plants are gonna have some of these seed pods that may get replanted in your garden. You may not get to decide exactly where they end up, but hey, it's a nice surprise to end up with free food in the future. But enough talk. Let's go check out an actual example of this in action. So here we are in our first hugel culture mound that we created last year and this year we've decided to dedicate it entirely to tomatoes and we've got a whole pile of them and they're all doing really really well there's one thing in this garden that we didn't plant and that is lettuce and yet 
here it is. So we've got a whole bunch of this Boston lettuce growing. We've got a head here, a head here, and a bunch of other ones on the other side. But we didn't plant any of this lettuce in this bed this year. We did last year. And at the end of the season, after it had all bolted and gone to seed, we chopped it and dropped it, and some of those seeds replanted themselves right here as free volunteers this year. So now we've got a ton of free food that we didn't have to buy, we didn't have to do any work for, we didn't have to maintain it or weed it or water it in any way, and yet here it is ready to become a salad. That's pretty awesome. So while missing out on a harvest is really disappointing and can feel like a complete missed opportunity, it's good to remember that nature provides new opportunities around every corner. And so try not to mourn this as the end and instead embrace it as a new beginning. I'm going to look into self-seeding crops a lot more for the future and I think you should too. See you soon.